we're looking for just a mature buck tonight. Um, we got some big eight points. Uh, one in particular I call the antelope buck. He's got brow pines, look like an antelope. So let's head back to see what happens. It's going to be a good movie theater tonight, I believe. As the night started, I knew that we had great weather, we had great pressure, and deer were already moving. Everything was perfect. Deer were moving, and I knew that it was just a matter of time probably before we saw one of those target bucks. It was just that kind of night. And sure enough, we look up, and I see the antelope buck. Well, he was at 300 yards, and I can make that shot, but I just thought, you know what, this deer's gonna work our way. We're between him and food, he's got a doe, there's two, three hours of light left. I just felt good, and I figured, uh, Lord willing, we'd just get that layup, uh, him walking right underneath us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, 
Yes, sir. I wanna, I wanna see squiggly. That's why I'm being still. Well, guys, this is the first time in a while I felt really good. I felt like we were gonna kill when we came in tonight. And we actually, my number one target buck is what we killed, that antelope buck. Big framed eight with a sticker. Um, and that squiggly buck is a better deer. But he's got way more potential and he's right out there too. And he is a cool deer. But uh, what an unbelievable, just day in the woods, the snow. Um, sitting in these muddy stands. Perfect wind. We've seen all kinds of deer. All kinds. Just an unbelievable night in the deer woods. My goodness, look at the frame on this deer. Just a great big eight point. He's actually guys bigger than I thought he was. You know, uh, we've had a pretty tough year, but the old Cascade, we're making it dance. Uh, Nebraska now, this deer, but, and, and this isn't the biggest deer I've ever shot, but he is actually the deer we came in here looking for. We're literally a mile and a half from Kansas on our piece right here. Planet Milo, we've done a ton of work this year. And he laid over here, he was about 300 yards, and he had him a doe, and uh, he laid there in the sun, and gosh, I was like, man. You know, and I, I just didn't feel comfortable taking a shot 300 out of that tree, uh, and I'm sure glad I didn't. I wanted to get up close and personal. But what a night, the Lord truly blessed us tonight, because not only did we kill a great buck with great footage, with great backdrop. Uh, the Lord blessed us after that too, and just squiggly come up here. And as I sat and watched everything that we got to see tonight, um, I knew it was just a blessing from the good Lord. So, you know, I challenge you, I don't know where you're at in your walk with Christ, but um, you know, it's been a struggle for me this year. And um, that's the only rock I, I have. And really, as I, I looked at my life, I mean, obviously my wife and my kids, they're, they're, they love me, but the Lord is my rock. He never changes and He always loves me. What a blessing in Northwest Oklahoma. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Cole. Girls, I love you. Unbelievable time up here. Unbelievable night. I'll never forget this night. Well, hey guys, welcome to this week's Walk by Faith. I want to dive into a verse that you've heard me talk about many times. It's Romans 8, 28. Paul writing here says this, And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those uh, who are called according to His purpose. Um, now, we can look at this verse and we can find out if we're a Christian or not. I mean, if you want to look and for your assurance of salvation, this is a really good verse. Now, there's a lot here. But it says, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God. Now, God's not causing everything to work to good for everyone. He's doing it for those who love Him. If you're saved, if you're saved, you, you have to love God. If you don't love God, you're not saved. Uh, one thing that I look at this when I look at my assurance is, do I love God? Do I love His Word? Does, you know, has God put in me something that I crave to read His Word and re truth? And then do I love other people, other Christians? And these are a good way to, to know if we're saved. So, you know, again, don't just think that God's causing everything to work to good for everyone because He doesn't. It's only for the saved, those who love Him. Check out Romans 8.28. Guys, I'm Jeff Danker, and remember, as we always say, shoot by sight and walk by faith.